You've tuned into Storiosity, where everyone has a story. And here's your host, Claire Boston. Hello, and welcome to Storiosity. My name is Claire Boston, and I will be your host for the next four weeks as we talk with different individuals in the community and learn about their stories. Today we have Jay Dahlhauser. Jay is a member of the Storm Lake community and is an executive director of the Bridge of Storm Lake. How are you today, Jay? I'm doing good. Good to be with you. Well, it's good to be with you, too. So I'd like to kind of start off by talking a little bit about your childhood, kind of where mm -hmm. you grew up and, you know, what was that kind of like and where were you born? I was born and raised in Iowa, not too far from here, about an hour. I was born in Emmitsburg and grew up in Whittemore, Iowa. And um, so I grew up on a farm and um, had a good childhood and haven't moved too far. I've been in Ames for college and then here in Storm Lake as far as where I've lived. So I haven't been outside of Iowa permanently in uh, my life. So. Well, that's cool. So what was it kind of like growing up on a farm in Iowa? <laughs> well, I'm a farm boy, and so when I went to school at uh, Iowa State, I um, went for agricultural engineering. I like math, and uh, that career seemed to fit me really well. And so um, I always like to work with my hands and to be able to do things um, like that and to be involved in agriculture. So that was kind of my childhood upbringing. That's really cool. So did you have any other hobbies outside of agriculture and farming? Um, I liked construction and, and building things. That's where the engineering part come, come into play. So actually producing things and that sort of thing. That was kind of my hobby. I, I really like enjoy sports uh, too. So that's been a part that I've kind of grown up with. Yeah. So we kind of know that you are, were very involved with missionary work. When did that kind of mm -hmm. enter into your life? Well, growing up, I grew up in a, in a, a church background, religious church background, and um, the church that I grew up in, in and uh, yeah, I was baptized in and married in, it was an interesting background as far as it came from an Anabaptist movement. And so uh, a lot of what I learned about God and salvation and all that was, was um, that you could be saved and you could trust in Christ, but there was a lot of based on what I, could, what I did. It's kind of like this good German background where you, you had to do these works in order to have salvation. And so I grew up in that. That's all I really ever known. And I grew up that that was kind of like the true church, you know, and that there other all these other things weren't really on track. And so um, when I got married and kind of started and, and had kids, we actually adopted our son and um, he in Guatemala. And I started kind of going through this process of adoption and God adopting me into his family and, and realizing that I was secure in my salvation if I could trust in Christ. So that was really kind of like the beginning of of me having a passion for the Lord and, and Christian mission work. I didn't really, at that time, I didn't really predict that I'd be a missionary at the time. I was still an engineer and, and doing all those things, but, <laughs> but uh, somehow through various sequences after that, uh, God kind of led me into mission work. And um, I could just tell you a little bit about that. What, what happened is when we ended up coming to know this, we ended up leaving that church that I grew up in, which is a really hard uh -huh. situation. And it was difficult on my family because they kind of felt like I was just kind of leaving the true true background that they had taught me. And I was actually took a break from engineering, was working for my dad, and it was just hard for us to work together after that. And uh, so that brought us, me back to uh, Storm Lake because the company that I worked for, for in engineering, I went back to them and they said, we could use you in our other office in Storm Lake. So it brought me here. It was kind of a good fit for both Annie and I. Um, she went to school at BVU here. Oh wow! <laughs> majored in Spanish education, and so it was kind of a good fit. Storm Lake was, and so I began working as an engineer. After being there another a year, I kind of had this longing to get back into working with my hands and construction, and I started uh, flipping houses, so buying them, fixing them up, and selling them while I was doing engineering. And I started doing that. Um, um, kind of on the side, but it became, I quit my engineering job to do that and do construction. And so as I was doing that in these different neighborhoods, I met a lot of different people that I wouldn't have normally moved into those neighborhoods and got to know, but I really kind of discovered their heart. And it was a lot of people that have come into Storm Lake in the last 20 years from different cultural backgrounds, meeting their families and the different desires that they had. And we got plugged into a good church and the church was really wanting to outreach to these people. And that's kind of the inception of this whole thing is like, we realized that these people want to be connected to the community in the same way the church wanted to be able to have a, a role in helping them too. And so this idea of the bridge and kind of connecting people from the neighborhoods came to be kind of threw out of that and just grew into this missionary role. So, 
So what was the greatest lesson or what was the greatest thing that you learned from working with those people during the construction or, or and the flipping of the houses yeah. and everything? I, I realize that a lot of it has to do with the relationship and that's really kind of what the bridge is kind of focuses on is that um, we have these different programs that happen but we really want people to get to know another person, hear the story, kind of like what you're doing today, right. and understand who they are. And so a lot of the things that we do in our, in our ministry is to be able to help people from the community connect with other people from the community so that they can understand where they come from. And no longer are you somebody from another culture or kind of stereotypical about them. You're like, oh, that's, you know, Naya, or that's, you know, you know their name, and you know, oh, that's their friend too. So that's really kind of what we wanted to be able to build out of the bridge. That's awesome. So thank you, Jay, for telling us your story so far. We will mm -hmm. be right back with Jay Dahlhauser to discuss the creation and development of the bridge of Storm Lake after this commercial break. Dollhauser here on Storiosity. Now, Jay, we've talked a little bit about, you know, where you grew up, you know, growing up at a, in a farm, on a farm, I mean, um, kind of going to college and about your missionary work. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about how the idea for the creation of the bridge came about. Mm -hmm. So, um, like I had said, you know, we had this passion to be able to be that connection, be that bridge uh, between the neighbors that we had met and the people that were um, um, at our church. And so that kind of grew and we ended up uh, considering possibly even like maybe we're called to career missions and going somewhere over across seas, somewhere like that. Okay. And then uh, we flipped the last house that I worked in and the idea of a flip is to really sell the house and make money on it. And it wasn't really selling for the price I needed. And so we decided to move into it and it was actually out North Seneca by Seneca Apartments. And that was really the reason why that house wasn't selling is because it was a neighborhood. There's a lot of kids running around, right. different cultures, some things in the news, things like that. And so uh, we moved into there and that's really when our lives changed and we started realizing that we didn't need to go somewhere for a mission field. It was right here in our own community. And so we wanted to be able to share the things that God had, uh, had with us and share that with our church people to really like bring them together and invite them into our neighborhood. And so we started what it, we call now as a neighborhood center. We didn't really know, have a name for it then, but we started that at, out of our house. And uh, I say our kids were the first connections because we had like 20, 30 kids at, in, our, in our house. This happened about three or four years ago. So we had them coming in after school and just hanging out with them, getting to know them. Slowly we got to know their parents and, and the whole idea of the bridge, the different areas that we have kind of started out of that whole neighborhood center and just living long term in a neighborhood where maybe I wouldn't normally have moved into, but God kind of put us there and, and we got to know people. So that's where the bridge got started. 
It's really cool. So how did the bridge kind of develop and turn what it is into what it is today? Yeah, so we got connected with Christ for the City. So that's kind of the, they're out of Omaha and they're a mission agency that's our parent organization. So they kind of oversee us. But that kind of gave us a little bit more of, I guess, an identity. And then um, as we kind of started doing this, people started coming out and said, this is really neat, you know, what you're doing. And so uh, we had a couple other uh, another couple, Renato and Elia Menez, start, and they said, well, we want to start a neighborhood center in the trailer park. So they moved back into the trailer park after they had been in a house wow. and bought a house. And uh, so they started a neighborhood center there. And then there was, a, you know, the kids needed some food after school. And so Sodexo started donating the food that they wow. throw away to the kids. It became more food than we needed. We started packing it, distributing it. And then now our food program feeds like 350 people out each week uh, out of the Methodist Church. And so we kind of, just kind of all those different areas, our English programs, our adult ed programs have all grown to be those programs, which are kind of just around our kitchen table and out of the needs that we had seen in, in the neighborhoods. So uh, that's kind of how it developed. Now there's over 100 volunteers that we have that are working through regularly throughout. So it's become more of like a, more than just taking people in the neighborhood to like being more administrative role and helping other people kind of be a missionary, even though they may work, you know, at different places in town after school, they can kind of reach out and be able to care for other people, get to know them. And so it's become more than just us doing it. Kind of, I guess we just did it by example and you know, other people have follow. So it's been really cool to see how God worked in that way. That's really awesome. So maybe what is your specific role in regards to the bridge? So as a role of executive director, which I never really saw this coming, coming <laughs> from an engineer to, you know, construction worker to, uh, you know, kind of just being a missionary. Now director role, it's a little bit different than what, it's kind of a little bit pushing me outside my realm, but it works all right. From the engineering background, I provide a lot of structure and to be able to have different uh, areas of the ministry and kind of help communication happen throughout the different programs. Um, we have a lot of volunteers that have stepped up to be leaders, so kind of raising them up, you know, um, giving them, showing value in them, who they are, and kind of encouraging them to, to go beyond themselves. So just, just, like, just like being one-on-one -on -one with somebody to actually lead an area so that they can lead other people. And so that's kind of been my role there now. And um, so I spend a lot more time in the office. I'm kind of engineering. I wanted to leave the office, not back in the office, but I'm willing to do it because uh, God's called me to this. So I'm willing to do it for now. So. Well, that's wonderful. So just kind of quickly, if you had any plan for the future of the bridge, what would it be? Well, I think um, we're have, actually having a leadership retreat this Friday. So tomorrow. And um, I think we're really considering like, you know, why are we doing, when you get involved socially in a community, there's so many needs. Mm -hmm. And so you can just get pulled from one way to another. And I think what, what this year's theme is really coming back to the cornerstone and why we do what we do. And it's because of our Christian faith and being able to share the gospel of Jesus with people. And so we want to kind of work through our programs and make sure that's happening. And so we're kind of going back through that and making sure that, that that's going to be, be shown, whether that's through action or deed, or through words, we want to be able to make sure that that happens in all of our Well, thank you, Jay, for coming here and sharing with us your incredible story. Mm -hmm. As always, this has been a UCM production at Buena Vista University. I'm your host, Claire Boston. Thank you for turning into Storiosity, where everyone has a story. Thank you again, Jay, for coming. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>